Hey guys, this is Real Appalachia with Shane. And Melody. And today we're coming at you from Beckley, West Virginia. That's right, the exhibition mine, in fact. Yes, I'm excited about this. You've never Me been too, in one, I've never you? been through it. This is gonna be fun. I've been through it once before, it's been a while. Yeah. And I could not wait to come back, so today's yeah. that day. Yeah, you wear your Beckley exhibition mine shirt all the time. I do, but not today. <laughs> I'm wearing our shirts today. Yes, let's get on down the road. Yes, and mountain life. That's right. And they've both been really popular since we put them out, so. Yes, so let's get on and check it out. Let's do it. Here we go. Bar in the hall. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Smells like my mouth. They mined the Sewell seam, and the Sewell seam's visible. It's visible right here, and it's visible over there. Yeah. Average is 28 to 34 inches. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower than that. But, And it's, it's a bituminous coal. It's a soft coal. When those old coal miners first started coming in to the, to the mines many, many years ago, the first ones came in with torches to light their way. There is a gas that can give you real big problems in a coal mine, and it's methane. It seeps right out of the coal while you're mining. Methane is lighter than the rest of the air, and it goes to the top. Well, naturally, when they come through with the torches and they get that methane, then woo, sometimes they get explosions. Sometimes they just get ignitions and nothing happens. That's what hopefully happens most of the time. They get some ventilation coming through the coal mine, and Hopefully it's going to kick that methane to a minimum. But sometimes they have big pockets and when it would ignite then you get a, in a big flash. I can imagine that probably you had fireballs, that's what they called them back then, was the fireballs. I would imagine you have fireballs who didn't have very many eyebrows. But, uh, yes, that's, that's what they did. Then, uh, a little later on, along came a different way to light your to, uh, to see in the coal mine to light your way. And, and it's called a teapot, and it took kerosene. Put kerosene right there, and it had a wick, and you light it, give you a flame, uh, a little brighter than a candle. A little later on came the era of the carbide light. 
It's, it works yeah. on the chemical carbide. Carbide looks like little pieces of gravel. You drop them down into the bottom of the container and it has a water reservoir in the top and you just open up the valve and you get some water going in. All right, now we're seeing that we've got uh, some gas coming out of there and we're just gonna close this thing. And then if we're lucky, we'll say abracadabra and Whoa. 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 All right. That was close. <laughs> that, that one worked good. And, and that's, uh, that's what the miners used. Now, in 1962, they opened this mine. They came in here, and they, all these places where we're stopped and traveling through, they, they raised the top and widened it. But those miners were down working at a level about like that handrail, maybe a little above, not much. So they were down on their hands and knees. And when they were mining and using this, they had lighting conditions that were about like that. Wow. Now every now and then, this thing would go out, it'd run out of carbide. He carried a flask of carbide with him and he would just put more carbide in it and put some water in and light it again. It's got a little striker right there with flint on Occasionally though, the home miner would uh, he would work and uh, he ran out of car, but he didn't have anything with him. And then he would end up having to go out of the coal mine in the dark. Now what I want you to do is to take all those uh, electronic devices and darken them. Please make sure they're totally dark. Hold it up again. I'm going to show you what, uh, what darkness is in the coal mine. Take your hand and hold it right up in front of your face. And I want you to tell me how many fingers can you see? Yeah, all right. Take a look around. All right, you heard you heard the old saying, dark as a dungeon down in the mine. Well, you know how dark that is. Everybody get okay. He's just like hand for the rod. Now, we talked about the same in the coal mine. And, and uh, the, the methane is a safety issue. And there's something else it's called. It's dead air. Uh, it's, uh, it's called black damp in a coal mine that gave miners problems and could still give them problems today, but they detect it pretty easily. If you have good ventilation, you won't have that problem. Black damp occurred mostly around old works in the coal mine. And it's, it settles more to the bottom. And when those coal miners came in in those early years, they brought a little animal with them to check for, for black damp. And he had a canary. And he put the canary in the cage put it down low, then he would get busy working, but he checked that canary, come take a look at it, see how he's doing. If the canary was in there, jumping around eating seeds, that was fine. But if the canary had gone to the bottom and was sort of taking like a permanent nap, uh, yeah. so that told him he better get out of the coal mine. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I like that. Uh, a little later, they came up with a thing called a safety good. lamp, and it worked off of uh, it worked off of uh, uh, kerosene, not kerosene, but uh, uh, Coleman fuel is what we use in them. And you put some fuel in the bottom of it and strike it. It's in an enclosure, an explosion-proof compartment. And to check for methane, hold it up to the top. And if you got methane present, the flame gets taller. Get a, get a little Christmas tree peak on it. Uh, if you uh, want to check for black damp, put it down there. And if you got black damp present, the little flame goes out and it tells you get out of the coal mine. Later on, they came up with electronic detectors. That's what they use today. This one's a that's dummy, possible. but uh, that's that's what we use today. Um, when the miner loaded his coal in the car, they would use mules and ponies to pull them out of the coal mine. This was a pony mine, I'm told. And back it up, put the single tree to it, and the pony would pull it to the outside. To get the coal in the car, he used a pick and, and, and in the very early days, they, they, got, they got the coal out of the sink using a, a pick and shovel. And then he would take a shovel and load that right in the car. When he got the car loaded, he had a thing called check tag. And it's right there. And he would put his check tag on the corner of the car. Then when it got outside, a fella out there called the check weighman 
would remove that tag and put it up on a peg next to his name, and he got credit for that car of coal that he loaded. It needed to have one ton of, oh, excuse me. It needed to have one ton of coal in there, and they had a bar that hung across the track, and as he pulled this through, the coal had to reach that bar, or it wasn't fully loaded. So, if it was bringing it to the outside and it didn't, it didn't touch the bar, then they would dock him. We're, going, we're not going to pay you full price for that. Also, they said, don't get rock in there. We want coal. We want nice lump coal. If it had rock on it, like the two-ton car, you see the rock? Well, they're docking for that too. How much do you think he got paid back in 1910? He got paid 20 cents. Every time he got a ton of coal out, and that was, that was low pay even in those days. And then if he got docked, so it might go down to 18 or even 16. If he loaded several of these and got them uh, loaded and along the side somewhere, maybe, maybe had a side track and put, it, put them there, then uh, there was another problem, and if you had a lot of people working there, somebody might come by there, well, I'll get his tag off of there and I'll put my tag on. They're going to steal your coal. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you do about that? It got to be so much of a problem that they had to address it. And what they did was, they got the check tag and they said, Guys, put your check tag on a block of wood. Then, throw that in the bottom of the car before you ever load it. Cover it up, send it outside. Nobody's going to mess with your check tag. That's where they can handle that. Okay. But yeah, he's going to be down on his hands and knees loading that coal into the car. How many cars loads would they do a day? They they could get that they, they could get somewhere and there's a low range and a high range on this. If 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 it had real good conditions he might get ten to twelve out in a day. That's not likely the case here in this part of West Virginia. More in the lower range. I give a medium I give a medium range of eight to ten. I've read an article about this and it says in this area it's probably more like six to eight. So, so I say probably eight, eight to ten is probably where it's going to come in there. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt say he's going to get eight to ten. When, All right. When the black damp happened, what, what did they do to correct it or fix it? Did they have your, your, your ventilation. Uh, they, they, in, in the very early days, they would they would build a, a fire. Have a, they would have a, a, a smoke or a, a fireplace at one end of the coal mine and build a big fire and get lots of air moving up. That movement of the air would, uh, uh, at the fireplace, would pull air through the coal mine and that helped ventilate. Um, but uh, yeah, once you're in black damp, you're boy, you're just you're going to do the same thing Mary did. You're just going to take a nap. <coughs> And it's going to be a long one. Um, I suppose see. if you caught that guy stealing your coal tag, you'd be like that command too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. That's a good point. I mean, if you get somebody back then, they were trying to feed their families. That was very, very. Yes. yes. Very, very. You know why they the same shape as a canoe? Yes. How long do they expect it to? take you to build a one-ton car of coal? That, that, that's going to depend on what kind of conditions you've got. And, and it's not just filling the car, it's getting the coal out of the seam. And we're going to address that over in, in uh, number three. They worked a 10 to 11 hour shift. And, uh, he, and, and again, he, he might get six to eight or maybe eight to 10 tons out in a day. So no, he's, he's really working hard to get that coal out of there. All right, I'm going to take us over to three. To do that, I'm going to go up and drop us backwards to get us in. Um, why do you say fire bars? <laughs> good, good question, good question. That's that. And remember, I was telling you about the guy who came through with the torch, and they and they called him the fire boss. And that's still the name they use today when they go through the coal mine to make the safety run before the shift begins to make sure that it's safe for the coal miners to go in and work. That's called the fire boss run. And the man who does that is called the fire boss. Yeah. And this one, this one was fire boss this morning. That was this morning? Yes. Yes. Uh, I think that was uh, Clacy. Clacy Lambert, CL. Clacy Lambert came through here this morning and checked this place for gas and black damp and just went around and checked the general roof conditions to be sure it was good for us to be here. Yes. All right. They actually still do that in this, in this 
museum mine. They they do a farm auction in the morning. <laughs> Virginia Mining uh, Rule Handbook. And my dad used to call it. I went back to work my place. And here is where he would get his coal out of the seam. And the same thing as over there where we were, except that we're just in a different part of the operation. And the first thing he's going to do is get below the seam of coal and get the rock out of there. There's rock that has to come out. He'll get a pick and lay it down on his side and get the rock out. You're hitting that hard rock and smacking it, and when you get it out of there, then you're going to pile it up on the side. It's real easy, as you can imagine. <laughs> yes. Once he gets all that, get back in there as far as you can get. Three feet back, maybe four. However long. Don't let your body get under it, though. You can't, you can't do that. That's, that's a very, very big mistake. Then, you get a coal drill. It's called a breast auger. And you put the tip of that drill into the coal seam. Put that breast plate right up against your chest. You're down on your hands and knees and you start turning and drill yourself a hole back through that coal. Once you get that done, you're going to need your favorite Sears catalog. <laughs> if you didn't have a Sears catalog, a Montgomery Ward would do. And you want to tear out a page and roll it up into a cylinder. Then once you've got the little cylinder made, crimp the bottom of it. Then you're going to get your black powder and pour it full of black powder and crimp the top. Now you've got a little tube of black powder. You're going to make two of those. And then you're going to put those two right back in that hole that you drilled. And you're going to drill three holes across. Then you're going to take a tamping rod and push that black powder all the way back to the end. Then you're going to get some dust, mud, something like that, and put it in the hole. And just keep filling it and filling it with dust and mud and use that tamping rod and tamp it up. Then you're going to use a needle and take the needle and put it in that tamped up mud or dust or if you happen to be lucky enough to, to have clay dummies, clay dummies is even better. And push that all the way back into the black powder. That made your little tunnel back there into it. Then you're going to get a piece of fuse, cordite, and put that fuse in there and run it all the way back into the black powder. Then you're going to seal up the end there a little, push it and seal it up. Then you're going to do that to all three holes, tie the fuses together. Now you're out here and you're ready to get your coal out of the seam. But the law says before you do that, make sure that your work buddies aren't around. Yeah. 
So you look in both directions, and then as loud as he could call, he would say, fire, fire, fire in the hole. Three times you had to say it. Then that carbide light that he had on, bring it down there, touch it to the fuse, and then he better get out of there. Go up a little ways, hunker down, get against the rib, and boom, nice big muffled explosion. Place might shake a little bit, some dust might come down, come back up here. Oh man, there's so much smoke and dust. Get away from that, let, let it clear out some. Then, it give you a headache if you had that, that black powder, you know, or dynamite later on when they use dynamite. Then, you get the shovel, shovel that into your coal car, big pieces. We got photos of miners grabbing chunks of coal that big around and just, just heave them over in there. Fill it up, and then some of the mines were larger, and they had somebody who would bring a mule or pony to you. Uh, some of them were small, and you, you just got your pony and took it with you. But uh, pull that out of the mine and get it to the outside. And when you got that done, what's the next step? Start over. Start all over again. Yes. <laughs> all right. You mentioned soft coal before. Was that uh, should we assume that was easier to uh, to mine than hard coal? Or this this area, that all of West Virginia, we've got bituminous coal, and that's called soft coal. And in Pennsylvania, they have anthracite, and it's hard coal. And anthracite, when it uh, when anthracite uh, breaks, it breaks into hard, shiny surface. Ours isn't quite like that. All right. Um, that thing, I, I've heard I've heard different stories about it, but it's an electric punch. Uh, I heard they didn't work too good because they were so heavy, hard lug around. But it did the pick work. Uh, I, Somebody said it's sitting off to the side up there, and that's a good place for it. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, over here, we have one of the first uh, coal scoops. It's, a, it's the orange piece of equipment. You guys will see it when I drop you down. And uh, you could use a coal scoop to clean up in the coal mine. You could use it to haul supplies. And there were even instances when they used coal scoops to bring out an injured coal miner. Uh, 1963 is when that came about. <coughs> on the right, we have a Jeffrey loader, and that thing has gathering arms on the end, and they work like that in a crab-like fashion. And uh, you just pull that up into a pile of coal, and those gathering arms would s pull the coal to the center, uh, load it onto that conveyor, and the conveyor would run it back, and you could raise the boom up and drop it onto your belt line. That's how you got your coal out of the coal mine. All right. Thank you. All right, we're going to drop back to four and talk about a few things. transitioning into uh, the mechanized uh, uh, area and era and uh, here we have a Goodman cutting machine and up there where he, he used to pick to make his undercut now he's got a Goodman cutting machine with an eight foot cutter board it's sort of like a chainsaw and it went back and forth on cables and you could get right in there and get your eight foot cut back underneath the coal put out a lot of dust though <coughs> Also, uh, we had electric and hydraulic coal drills. See that? That thing's heavy, but it was drilled that hole back through there. And it did it fairly quickly. Also, now I don't, I don't think I've uh, talked about roof support, but, uh, well, a little. Uh, set mine timbers. You set mine timbers and, and timber as you go back. You know, you, you, you take your place and you go straight back through there with it. Just keep mining. You, you take the coal out and, and get you another undercut and, and shoot it and just move on back. 
As you go, you put timbers up. Then along came roof bolting. And a roof bolt uh, in the, the early ones were uh, conventional roof bolts. Here it is. And it has uh, this uh, little plug on the end of it and it's got threads in it and it had these wings and when you put this up into the hole that you, you drilled, by the way this thing, this, it had a drill head right here, you put a, you put a, uh, a bit in there, see the, the end of it, it's a, it's a bit, you could remove that bit, raise that up and drill a hole right up into the top, then you put this roof bolt up in there and tighten that up. And when you tighten it, it pulls this plug down and the wings open up and it's spread open in that hole and it held tightly. In 1970, along came something new. The miners had never seen anything like this. And it's called a rosin glue bolt. And up in the hole goes the rosin glue followed by the roof bolt. Sometimes they go up simultaneously. And when he got it all the way up in there, they would spin that drill head and it would break open that rosin glue and set it up. And set up in 15 seconds. That would hold your top. They showed those old coal miners set and they laughed at it. <laughs> glue, you're not going to hold that up with glue. But it did. They worked very well. And that's still what they use today. You can get these in all different lengths. So. Blue hmm. bolts were great. This particular coal mine was roof bolted in 1962. It held very well, but a year and a half ago through the winter, uh, Genmar and Affinity Coal got together and came in here and they put these new bolts and we call these pizza pans. <laughs> and yeah, and they do look like pizza pans, don't they? I'm sure you've seen them already. And they went through this whole coal mine and put uh, the, the new roof bolts in from front to back and also on the ribs and we're, we're really really bolted well all right now of the hazards that we talked about we you know you, you have explosion hazards from from methane you've got coal dust explosions we had um, explosions for black powder and then when they started using dynamite dynamite blasting caps so you, you could have explosions from all that so uh, one, one of the, the big things was the coal dust. When you get a methane ignition, that heats up the air instantaneously and any coal dust that's, that's clinging to the side or the top, that, that would, um, if, if you had a methane ignition, then that would instantaneously put that coal dust out there in the atmosphere. It would just shake it loose and it's out there. And the heat would ignite the coal dust and then you would have a tremendous explosion. April 28, 1914 at Eccles Mine, which is about 20 minute drive from here, uh, blew up and killed 183 miners. And it was an explosion that so, it was so intense that it blew mine timbers all the way out of the coal mine. And they went hundreds of feet in the air and then came back down. So you can only imagine how, how severe an explosion that was. All right. This particular coal mine uh, stretches for about eight miles, I'm told. All right. Uh, now, one of the ways that they finally learned to, uh, to deal with uh, the coal dust was by rock dusting. And you take 50 pounds of rock dust and put it in that hopper, that's a rock duster. Put in the hopper and turn it on and it would come out the outlet. You put your hose on that and you could rock dust your coal mine. That, all that white area over there, that's been rock dusted many, many years ago. And that covers up that dust so that it's not available to explode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, a, another hazard, as if we didn't have enough already, um, we've got uh, kettle bottoms. And along with kettle bottoms, uh, there's, uh, we've got a couple of sulfur balls that are there. There's a small sulfur ball, a large one that occurs naturally when you're mining coal, sometimes you find those. Here's a kettle bottom, and that is a petrified tree stump. It's rock. It used to be wood, now it's rock. There's a larger one. And if you see, that can occur anywhere, but uh, if it happens to occur right above your head and where you're mining, and you, you look up and, and there's one there, what you're going to see 
is a little ring of coal all around, all the way around that thing, but it's just sitting up in there. It could fall out any second. And uh, if you know it's there, put a, put a mine timber under it, or uh, get a, get a bar, maybe you can pop it out of there. Later on, you'd use a roof bolter and get a strap and put a strap up there and bolt it on each side to hold it in. But uh, uh, kettle bottoms, yeah, they took out quite a few miners in back in the day. Yeah. Yes, did you have a question? Mm -hmm. Um, that there was a bucket we saw that inside, and um, you can sit on it to do the work. Yes, yes, it makes a good little stool, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, now, uh, I, I don't know if any of you saw it, but we got our, we got our uh, family rat here. Uh, there he is, he's plastic. And miners, uh, they, they didn't kill the rats in the coal mine in those early days. Uh, and there was a good reason for it, and that was that uh, the rats knew more about what was going on in the mine than you did. And <laughs> if you looked up and you saw all the rats leaving the coal mine, you better get out of there too, because they know something's going to happen. All right. Um, now over here we have a dinner hole. This was the <clears throat> this was the enjoyable part of the day for a coal miner. And dinner time came, and, and you go and you get your bucket, sit down, and and eat whatever it is that you you put in there, your favorite thing. My dad took uh, two two uh, biscuits with brown sugar and butter. He liked that. Sometimes he'd have some bacon. Um, but uh, if you happen to have one of these uh, laying around your house, maybe some member of your family had one, uh, don't, don't let it go in the yard sale and, and sell it for uh, 15 or 20 bucks. This thing, that's a $100 deal right there. Uh, yes. And this one's got the natural lid. And I've, I've, I've heard coal miners say, and I don't, I don't know if I've ever said, uh, if I've ever worked with one who actually saw it happen, but say that they had seen evidence of rats taking their tails and put it in there and pull on that to get in that bucket. I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm not going to have, but I don't know. That's that's the uh, pie pan, and if you were. Uh, if you were working and you got your payday and you brought your payday home like you're supposed to, you might have a big piece of apple pie in that pie pan that day. Um, this is the main chamber and that's where you're going to have all the good things, your bologna sandwich, whatever it is you want, that you want to eat. If your buddies didn't steal it from you, you know, you might <laughs> go in there and find out the bologna sandwich is gone. Um, uh, but the other thing, uh, that's your water. That's where he carried his water. You, you, could, you could probably do without the bologna sandwich if you had, but you can't do without that water. It's hard work in there all day long, and you're going to sweat, and you've got to have the liquid. And, and sometimes uh, folks, would uh, they swipe your water too. Uh, naturally, you don't want them doing that, and they finally come up with some way to stop that too. And I don't know, we'll try to let you guys decide. Would, would, would you drink my water? Uh -uh. Okay. Uh, all right. You gonna drink my water? No. Yeah. You don't want that? They okay. went to Grandma, they say, Grandma, you know that old set of false teeth that you got laying around? Yeah. There can I have those? Okay. Right. So, Smart. When it comes time for you to have your water here, it'll probably be there for you. Was that enough water for them? I mean, get it probably, probably so. Yeah, you put it, fill that in cold water. Yeah. All right. Questions? Have any questions? Yes. How many exits and entrances were there? How many what? Exits and entrances were there? Help me out there. Exits and entrances. Oh, oh, okay. How many exits and entrances into the coal mine? Good, good question. Uh, it would depend on how many places they wanted to punch into the mine, and it could be several. Um, this this particular mine has a section going off this way. Back there where we stopped at the pump, it's got one going in that direction. We actually have one. This. This is an escape way if we have to get out, and you could go this way and back that way. It's, it's all sealed off, you can't. But this, this particular area will go down here and go down a couple of, uh, couple of blocks, and you can come out again down there. But it would depend on the size of the coal mine, and some of them just had the one entrance in. 
Um, and, but they're going to have some ventilation of some kind too. So you're probably going to have on the other end of the mine, you're, you're going to have you're going to have some kind of ventilation. Um, but uh, most 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 of them would probably have at least two. Some of the very first ones, maybe. I, I know some guys that had a little old punch mines, and they got, it was before the and they didn't really go by the rules at all anyway. And they just they just punch back into the wall and go back in there and and dig some coal out of there. And they really weren't following the rules. But, uh, all right. Any more questions? How did the coal miners relieve themselves? Good question. Um, there was uh, nowadays they've got porta potties down there. Uh, there was an area where you had uh, broken um, broken roof bolts and bent uh, roof bolts and tim broken timbers and old timbers and just boxes and crates and general trash and they pushed that all up in a pile and they called it the gob. And when the miner needed to uh, go. When he had to go, he just he took his newspaper and he went over behind the gob and he read the newspaper there for a few minutes. <laughs> right. and, 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 and they wanted to make sure you got in return air. Don't get in your incoming air. See, the mine is the mine's got a circuit for the incoming air and outgoing. And go in a return air. Don't don't get in the incoming air or your buddies are going to be mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else? Okay, I'm going to get us outside. If you have more questions, I'll be glad to try to address those. I, I think I've covered everything. I hope that I did. And again, thanks for letting me know about that door. That's, uh, that's important. <laughs> this look at the exhibition coal mine it's your first time in one isn't it? yes it was and i have a new appreciation for coal mining so you won't be applying for any of those jobs no there, huh? it's not for me i definitely could do it I he lost me at rats i can see you being a good roof bowler though <sighs> no and it was cold it was dark i was much much happier to be back in the sun <laughs> it was hard work yeah it is and i got a lot of appreciation for the folks that have done that absolutely for our generations of the family but absolutely yeah yeah. We hope you enjoyed this look at it. We're going to be back yeah. for another installment. We're going to look around at the coal camp area of this, but we thought it'd be good enough for two separate videos. Yep, that's right. So stick around and watch for that one. Yeah, if you wait around much longer, my hair will be on the other side of my head. <laughs> with long, but Give us a thumbs up, share this video, and subscribe to our channel and as check well. out our t-shirt shop. Yes, if you come through the mine, which we recommend you yeah. doing, I recommend bringing a hoodie. Yes. And you can buy one of ours. Yes. yes. Perfect. Keeps the temperature perfect in there, I've been told. That's right. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, we'll see you on down the road.